born in the Holy Spirit, he will humble himself even more. And we see this more, very strongly in the meeting of St. Zosima and Mary of Egypt. They had a struggle there, who will bless? And uh, <coughs> St. Mary said, you must bless, you are, you are a priest. And, and the saint who was initiated in the, way of, in the ways of the Spirit, no, you must, you must bless because it's not, uh, the, the value is not in the functional priesthood, but in the, in the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he realized that St. Mary had a greater gift than himself. And finally, she, she blessed him. Uh, that was a very charismatic m meeting, really, to see that. And we see from that that always people who are truly spiritual, they have this competition. Who will humble himself more before the other? And if we manage to live like that, not only love will prevail in our life, but we will up, up, upgrade our conscience. We will become more and more refined in our, in our conscience. Otherwise, if we bind one another, finally we'll be consumed, uh, as St. Paul says. Uh, finally we'll consume one another, that is to say, d destroy our life. Media? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, I, hope, I hope I hear you because my uh, hearing aid is not very good. I'm quite loud, so <laughs> you'll yes. Um, I have a question. How does this work uh, if, let's say, one person is trying to do the best they can in terms of having this love through God for another person, selfless love and so on, sacrificial love, but the other party is on a completely different side and perhaps is trying to enslave you with arrogance, with rejection of these values. I mean, this, what you said, seems yes, functions I'm when both people are in church. And I don't only mean for human relationships, necessarily marriage, but I also refer, for example, you know... Um, in work and in other... In, in other, uh, because in you other see what areas. happens from my experience is that people... Not only that, it's not a problem that they take advantage of you. It's up to you how you, you I'll, humiliate I'll yourself. I'll tell you. But, but the problem is you're not helping them either. They're yes. becoming worse. No, no, you're you thinking humanly. Yes, I I'll, yes. I'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> um, to start with, if we can help it, we don't marry, pe we don't marry with people who haven't, with whom we have nothing in common on the spiritual plane. There are three planes of life, the physical, the psychological, and the spiritual. And it's nice that we coincide on the three levels, not only on the physical, not only even on the psychological, but also on the spiritual, which will be the source of our strength for all the other kinds of life, which will really season our whole life. That's why I say, St. Paul says that we should not subjugate one another. We should not sub subjugate ourselves to non-believers. We must have, if we happen to be married, it's different with someone, and then, and, and then in the course of our life we, we, we change, you know, and we, we try to be Christians, it's, it's different. But if we can afford from the beginning, we marry with someone who is also Christian and who, who share the same aspirations and the same hope, the same living hope. Now, if we marry with, some, if we marry with someone who is not even a believer, then St. Paul says that we must be patient. We, it, it is a matter of faith. If we are truly, if we are truly committed to the Lord 
and we put all our trust in him and we humble ourselves, even there we can bring victory. I'll, I'll tell you an, another example. A, a lady is, who is a doctor and she works in a hospital, she came one day to me and said to me, it is impossible for me to stay in my work because the director there of the clinic is very nasty to me. <coughs> and uh, I, cannot, I cannot work anymore there. And, and uh, I'm thinking of abandoning my job completely. I said to her, let's, let's try and make an experiment. I said to her, stay there where, where you are, but try to change yourself. She said, how? Start praying, I said to her, like that. Lord, I thank thee that through this man you are showing me how far is my heart from you and I cannot keep my peace. She started praying like that. Uh, Lord, I thank thee that through this man you are showing me how far I am from you, how far is my heart from you. And after two weeks, the director of, of, of the clinic went to this uh, young lady doctor and said to her, either you are no longer the same person or I made a mistake. And the whole thing changed and, the, and there was a perfect harmony in their, uh, in their collaboration and in, their, uh, in working together. That's an example. But she had to humble herse herself, not to have any bitterness at all, to be completely confident in, in God that he can shake, he can speak to his heart good things and uh, put her, herself even under that. She did it and uh, within two weeks she, she won the victory. It's a matter of faith. If we reason humanly and, we, uh, and on a psychological level there is no way out. But if we manage to do what our fathers taught us, what did they say? The, I'll tell you an example from the uh, stories of the Desert Fathers. One young novice went to St. Pimen the Great and mm -hmm. said to him, Father, I think I have got the assisting prayer. He began to feel that he was in, he was acquiring the prayer of the heart, unceasing, unceasing, unceasing prayer and memory of God. And the saint looked at him and said to him, and do you think that that is a great thing? Great thing is to put yourself under every creature. That is the reasoning of our fathers. If we manage to humble ourselves before the other, surely will upgrade, will help him to up upgrade his conscience. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a different relationship. I'll tell you another story from the Desert Fathers. But uh, better, you, you, you speak. No, no, I just wanted to ask you to repeat. What, how did she pray? Lord, I thank you for... Yeah, she, she said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> That, that uh, thank you, I thank the O Lord for this man uh -huh. that you are showing me through him how far is my heart from you. She humbled herself utterly and she brought victory because you know, we mustn't forget that the Lord became the victor over death and sin by his going down to the nethermost parts of the earth. That's why St. Paul, with great wonder, he says, the Lord having ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. And who is he who ascended on high? But he who first went down to the nethermost parts of the earth. We mustn't forget that the Lord brought such an absolute and great victory because he put himself under all of us. He, went, he put himself to the bottom of, bottom of hell. He, 
he went down to the bottom of hell so as to be able to lift all the created being to heaven. And uh, if we want to share in his victory, we must follow the same path. We must first go down with him and he will raise us up in, uh, when the time comes, when he knows that it's good for us. It's St. Peter who says that υποτάγεται την κρατεά χείρη του Θεού και αυτός υψώσει μας εν καιρό. Submit yourself to the strong hand of God and he will, he will lift you up in a, a new time, a new season. Thank you, Father. It's, uh, it's very nice to have somebody, perhaps like you or like Father John and Father Arthur or Father Abraham, to teach us how to be humble when we need to. But it's not always easy for us to see that. That lady doctor was very lucky because she really found a way of humbling herself through this prayer. How can we acquire humility in order to, um, in order to get the love for God? But uh, by following the commandments of the Lord. All the commandments of the Lord are saying, are speaking to us, are saying to us the same thing. If someone uh, smites you on the on the right, turn the left, turn your left. And if someone forces you to go one mile, go two. That is crazy. This uh, this way, the the love of God was manifested uh, on in this world as as a folly, as madness. God to die for His enemies. We are His enemies because sin is enmity to God, and we we are all sinners. And yet he died for us all, who are sinners. And he continues in the liturgy. Who do we are? We are, an assemb we are an assembly of God's enemies, because we are all an assembly of sinners. And yet, in the sacrament, he gives us his life. We come in the church, we are an, ass an assembly of, of his enemies, and then to, the to these enemies, he gives the most precious the most precious uh, thing, his life, his eternal life, in the, sac in, in the sacrament of his body and blood. So all his commandments really are crucifying our carnal mind and enlightening us to follow that path. And uh, I don't know if you remember from the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, in the anaphora of the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, we must always pray that God inspires good things in the hearts of the rulers of this world as well. Lalis on Agatha and Descartes afton hyper this ecclesia. So all the commandments of God have this property to change our mind because there is nothing common between our mind and the mind of God. Our thoughts are so distant from the thoughts of God and our ways are so distant from the ways of God that, as prophet Isaiah said, as heaven is distant from the earth. Because, yes, there is nothing common. That's why and St. Paul says the same thing, that the gospel of Christ is not at the measure of man, because it's not given by, by man, but by the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we must, we have to, we have to crucify our carnal mind in order to receive the mind of Christ. And that is, that is, the, that is the beauty of repentance. When we repent and we trust in the commandment of the Lord, we crucify our, our carnal mind and our, and our self-confidence. We don't put our confidence in us, but in Him who is able even to raise the dead. I don't know if I managed to explain it, but the commandments will do it. If we are careful with the commandments of Christ, those commandments will lead us surely to 